So there's a new Hunger Games movie. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's me, and today we're gonna look at the new Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Okay, admittedly, I never really cared for the Hunger Games that much. They were okay, but it certainly wasn't my favorite. It didn't grab me all that much. So keep that in mind when you watch this review, but I still think I go into these things keeping a pretty open mind about the film itself. So the movie is directed by Francis Lawrence. You, of course, know him from The Hunger Games, I Am Legend, and I like this one, Constantine. So with these films under his belt, obviously he's somewhat capable of doing it, and I think he does a pretty decent job in this film. Um, it, I'll get to what I had issues with more in a little bit, but basically, he was okay. It was a decent job. And as always, if you could do me a favor and go and hit that subscribe button down below, it helps the channel a lot. And I would love to see you guys comment down below. Are you Hunger Games fans? Are you someone who's absolutely gonna go out and see this film? What did you think about it? I'd love to have that conversation with you guys down at the bottom. Generally telling a prequel story is somewhat difficult. And the reason is, is because we already know where it goes. We know where the characters end up. So telling something that's more about the journey and making that exciting and interesting to hook your audience into it is the hardest part. And this movie doesn't do a bad job. It's actually pretty decent. So of course, if you are familiar with the Hunger Games series, you know that Snow is played in this movie by Tom Blythe. He does a very, very decent job. It shows a little bit of his innocence, but you can see where he's going and where he ends up. So it's kind of a nice exploration of his character. And it's interesting to see him in this world of political intrigue and the battle with and within classes themselves. And to see the development of the Hunger Games themselves is actually really, it's really interesting. They did a decent job of this. Rachel Ziegler is kind of an interesting part of the movie. She can obviously sing. Now, yes, there has been a lot of stuff, culture stuff, political stuff that is going on with her. And you need to be able to push that aside to still recognize that she is tremendous at singing, 100%. I thought it was funny because she's prominently featured on the posters and in the trailers, but she's really not in the movie very much at all. It seemed like from the way they were doing it and promoting it, like she was going to be a much more substantial uh, role in this film, and she's really not. She does an okay job, but for the most part, she's very limited, so she's sort of forgettable. So as a little side note to that, the movie Yesterday, I loved that movie. I thought it was just awesome, and of course I love the Beatles music, but anyway, Anna de Armas was featured like hugely in the trailer and there were a whole group of people actually sued the studio because her scenes were cut and she wasn't in the movie except for this one little spot. Anyway, I thought that was really, really funny that they sued because she wasn't in there. They thought it was false advertising. Viola Davis is also in this film. It didn't really work for me. She was playing a little bit over the top, a little campy. And although some people might find it interesting or quirky, I'm curious as to who made that creative decision. Was it her um, or was it someone who, was it the director and he wanted her to do this? I'm not sure, um, but it just didn't seem to work and fit for me. But you know, that's gonna be personal preference for people. I didn't care for it, but it's funny because I actually love her. She does such a great job in so many films that she's in. Uh, this one just didn't, didn't work for me. On another positive note, uh, the world building was actually pretty decent. Like, so when you see all these uh, CRT screens up there, it, it's like kind of like an old school, almost like, you know, 1950s, 1960s. Um, and they did a pretty decent job. So the set design, the costume designs, all actually really good. The negative part of it though, was the CGI. Oh my God, you can see how either overworked, underpaid, a combination of them both, and especially uh, on the overwork part, the lack of time given to the these artists who do this work because it suffers. And it's funny because as you see things progressing and even like TV shows can have spectacular special effects, sometimes these movies are suffering because they're just not giving them enough time or, or money <laughs> to get it done. So the the worlds are suffering because of that. This, of course, is a little bit of a tricky movie because people who are Hunger Games fans are going to obviously be overly excited sometimes. But when I go into a film, I want to see if it is if it stands on its own two feet, if it doesn't rely on so much of what the previous movies did. And as a prequel, you should hope that it doesn't. 
but generally the movie is okay, it's decent. The first two acts of the movie actually really roll along pretty well. And then the third act goes to a crawl. And I mean a crawl. And of course, I'll never do spoilers unless I say it's a spoiler. But then what happens is that after it goes down to like super slow motion, then it builds up at the end in such a frenetic way. It's like, oh my God, it's almost like they ran out of time and they're like, okay, we're taking our time. Oh my gosh, we gotta get done right now. And they like sped through the ending so fast that it left you very frustrated and unsatisfied. So you had pretty, you know, two good parts, one very slow part, and then an ending that just felt so rushed. It didn't, it didn't flow very well. And so that's where it kind of lost me quite a bit. I felt mostly bored by the end of the film. Ultimately, I'm gonna give this a 65. I think that that's, I think that that's totally fair. It gets that good of a score because of the actors. They did a nice job. The story was actually interesting. The world building was good. And the directing was, for the most part, really good. What drops the score down was, and I'm not gonna be too nitpicky on this, the CGI was very, very obvious. It didn't, it didn't look very good. It takes you out of the experience. But mostly it's because of the fact that you had this really good first section, second section, and then the third act, you slowed down to that crawl, it became rushed at the end, and it just didn't flow very well. So that boredom part really kind of took over for me. And I'm a guy who likes slow movies, but the pace that they set up in the beginning and then all of a sudden slowed down to that crawl, I think that was the most, uh, that was the biggest mistake that they made. And of course, besides the score, I always like to say, should you go see this film? If you're a Hunger Games fan, listen, of course you're gonna go see it, right? It's Hunger Games, and you've been invested in this series, so you're gonna wanna go see this. Um, you won't be completely disappointed. You might even like it more so than my score. Um, but if you're new, this is, and you haven't seen Hunger Games before, this is not something that's gonna win you over and be like, oh my gosh, that was such an experience, I love it to death. It's not gonna be like that. But that being said, it's okay. Anyway, everybody, that wraps it up for me. Thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll see you guys in the next one.